evening and warm welcome to one and all. Uh, at the first, at, at the outset, I'd like to thank the organizing team members for giving me this opportunity. So for the next 15 to 20 minutes, uh, we'll be seeing the science, important science and just trade therapy. Because why I chose this topic? Because this is an effective way of communication to within a 15 matter of 15 to 20 minutes if you have to give some take home points. We can go if you have to see so many cases. Then uh, the appreciating the science in chest radiograph uh, will be very useful because chest radiograph, uh, whether whatever the field, whether general medicine or surgery or auto, any uh, nephrologist, they will be definitely coming across a chest radiograph. Uh, so there are certain uh, signs which are very classical. So it will be definitely useful. And uh, so the objective of my talk is to demonstrate the various signs in thoracic radiology. Uh, these are the main topics like the lobar collapse. How do I identify the lobar collapse? Floral, what are the floral pathology? Science in floral pathology, science in cardiac diseases, mediastinal diseases, and uh, pulmonary parenchymal diseases. So these are my objectives. So science in these conditions. Let us see one by one. Now. So first we'll identify the lobar collapse. The upper lobe, right upper lobe collapse, right middle lobe collapse, lower lobe collapse. What are the signs in uh, left upper lobe collapse? Left lobe collapse. So the, the sign is called as this is a right upper lobe collapse due to a mass, hilar mass. It, uh, it is called as golden S sign or it is otherwise called as reverse S sign of golden. It's very complex uh, to describe it initially. So normal simple collapse will have a convex margin like this, upper margin like this. Whereas if it's because of the mass lesion, then we have a sign called as reverse golden S sign because the mass will prevent the uh, can you talk louder? Yeah, because the mass will prevent the, the hilum to move further away in the medial aspect, whereas in the lateral aspect it is free to move. So you have this medial end will not be lifted up, whereas the lateral margin of the um, fissure will be pulled up. So this sign is called as reverse S sign of golden, which is you, uh, described as right, right hilar mass, okay, right upper lobe mass. So that is the first sign. Now, we go on to the right middle lobe collapse. So we use the uh, sign called silhouette uh, sign. Silhouette sign. So when what is silhouette? When two different objects of different density are placed close to each other, the margins are easily easily can appreciate. It. Whereas when the two structures of diff, of same density are play, uh, placed close to each other, then the margin is obscured. So when, so here it is because uh, uh, this is called silhouette sign. So in radiology, what we call silhouette sign positive means there is a loss of definition. So this is silhouette sign positive. So this is a case of right middle lobe collapse. So because the right middle, the right heart border we will be in contact with the middle lobe. So we are not able to differentiate the right heart margin like unlike like you see the left heart margin. So this is a case where you have right middle lobe collapse. It will appear like that. The right heart border will be. Uh, margin will be lost. So this is silo positive, right middle lobe pathology will be like this. So this is the lateral view will be like this. Okay. Then we move on to the right lower lobe pathology now. So same silo sign, the right lower lobe it will be in contact with the diaphragm. So we are not seeing the diaphragm here. So here also silo sign is positive. We are not able to demarcate the border between the lower lobe and the diaphragm. The diaphragm now in normal x-rays we should see up to the vertebral body level, up to this level it should be seen. If it is not seen, then it is a pathology. So here the collapse, we have a straight margin like this and we are not seeing the diaphragm. So this is a right lower lobe collapse. This is a sign of right lower lobe collapse. So middle, middle lobe, we have the heart border position which is not demarcated previously. Here you are seeing the heart margin clearly. So this is not a middle lobe pathology. So this is a lower lobe pathology. Now we move on to the left upper lobe collapse. The left upper lobe collapse has two important findings. It is called a wheel-like opacity or ground glass opacity. You see this, this is a ground glass or wheel-like opacity. And apart from that you have a small crescent loose, uh, lucency near the aortic knuckle. That is called Luftershield sign. That is because the left lower lobe hyper expands or uh, uh, hyper compensatory expansion is that by the left lower lobe and that will cause outlining of the aortic knuckle. So that lucency is because of the aortic uh, around the aortic knuckle you see the lucency because the left lower lobe 
uh, is getting compensatory hyperinflation. So same thing you can see it in the CD. The, this is the hyper expansion. So of the lower low, this is a upper low collapse, uh, lung volume, and the air gets trapped between the iota and the collapsed lung segment. So that, that is why you are able to see this air lucency. So this is a fluctuation in German means uh, it's a crescent. So it's an air crescent sign. This is a uh, real life opacity or ground glass opacity. Now we of more. So this is a, for a closer uh, view. So that uh, the, because of the hyper expansion of the left lower lobe, you can see the lucency around the aortic duct in the background of real life opacity. Okay, now left lower lobe collapse. We have a sign called flat based sign. So this is a flat based sign. Normally uh, you have a small angulation which is formed by the aortic knuckle with the pulmonary artery, pulmonary trunk. So that will be lost. It will be a straight border like this. This patient is having two different pathologies. This is a, this will come to in another case. So this, uh, if you appreciate this, then it is okay. So this is called flat base sign, which will be a sign in left lower lobe collapse. So lower lobe, again, you are not seeing the diaphragm. There's a loss of silhouette of uh, between the collapse and the diaphragm. So this is silhouette positive again. So next. So uh, this is an endobronchial mask, which will cause a tapered bronchus sign, so or rat tail sign. If you see the left, this is a trachea, and the left main bronchus are called, you can appreciate the lucency. Whereas the right main bronchus, you are not seeing it fully because there is a, a mask. It, it, it could not be a pneumonia because you are not seeing any distal air to it. There is no air bronchogram sign or anything there. That. That's a complete opacification. So this most likely to be a malignancy. So this is either called a strap tail sign or tapered taper bronchus sign. So this is a closer view. So the bronchus is getting tapered and the upper narrowing is because of the mass tissue that's not crystal for the air bronchogram to say it is a pneumonia. Next uh, most common in uh, uh, asthmatic patients like uh, allergic bronchi, they will be having a ABP, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. It's, a, it's like a condition called bronchocele. The impacted mucus will get in between the dilated airway. So that will cause a finger in glove appearance. So this is a closer view, which will have a finger in glove appearance. So this sign is classically described in allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis because of the bronchocele. Next, I think many of you would have been familiar with bronchial cases. Uh, in X-ray, we will know what is the tram track sign. The CT will get a appearance called signet ring sign. So these are the signet ring appearance. So our bronchial cases will look like a CT for closer inspection. So the, this is the branches of the pulmonary artery. They should be equal diameter. The, uh, when it is, and the, this is a bronch uh, artery and this is the pulmonary artery branches. So this when the when it becomes more than the diameter of the pulmonary artery branches, then you get the appearance of signet ring. Now we have to move on to the plural pathology. So uh, pneumothorax is one of, one of the most uh, important things to find it out at the initial stage so that the patient in, will not go into retention pneumothorax. So what are the signs in uh, pneumothorax you see? Uh, this is called visceral pleural line. So this is, uh, you are seeing a, a well demarcated line. This is called a white pleura or visceral pleural line. And there is no further air, uh, vascular marking distal to that it is not seen. So just a simple lucency is there. So the, this is a sign now called visceral pleural sign. Uh, this can be can sometimes be confused. Uh, this can similar line you can see in children, infants, and as well as in elder patients because of the skin fold. So how to differentiate is that if it is going to be a skin fold, then distal to that you may see a small uh, vascular markings. So that will not be seen in, in case of a pneumothorax. So then this, if the patient is in supine position, you will get this sign. Uh, uh, pro, uh, erect position. Now you see how it is in a supine position. You get a sign called a deep sulcus sign. The patient is in supine position, you get a sign called deep sulcus sign. So this is a sign described in the uh, 
contacts and this will find information. So themes that just signed. And this is again, it's called continuous diagram sign, which will be seen in remote area diagram. So we are seeing as lucency below the arch shadow, so cardiac shadow. So this is called continuous diagram sign. And uh, you are seeing a small lucency near the left heart margin, and as well as near the uh, when you go up to the neck muscles, there are stately small air lucencies are seen. So this is our pneumo media stenum will look like in adult. Whereas in children, the pneumo media stenum, we have a, a, a neonates, we have a, a, a angel wing sign because of the, the thymus is getting lifted by the air. So this sign is describing uh, pneumo media stenum in infants. Here also you are having a new, uh, continuous diaphragm sign. And um, this is uh, called black pleurocyne. Uh, you can see it in uh, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. So here it is better seen in this CT radiograph. You are seeing that the pleura will be appearing relatively black compared to the affected pulmonary parenchyma. So in pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, there will be disproportionate radiological findings compared to the patient's symptom. The patient symptom may be relatively better, but you but will have a lot of uh, radiological findings. So, it does, in, in a radiograph also, if you are you know, watching it closely, then you can expect a small uh, black lucency. Uh, that is called black chloracine, which you can see it also in the CT radiographs. In empyema, so how to differentiate between empyema versus pleural effusion? In our opinion, will have a uh, opacity like this. So, the lack will be of the pregnant belly appearance. Of Pregnant belly sign. So this this, uh, it, it will, this finding will not be will not be expecting in a pleural effusion. So this sign is uh, described in empyema. So coming to the CT, how to confirm it's a uh, empyema? <coughs> this is a empyema and this is a normal pleural effusion. This is a post contrast image. Uh, you are not seeing any enhancement of the pleura. So this is a parietal pleura and the, uh, this is a visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. There is no contrast enhancement or any pleural thickening. Whereas when you compare, come to the empyema, there is a pleural thickening and enhancement is seen. So if you want to differentiate uh, uh, whether it's a simple pleural effusion or empyema, contrast study is important. So you will have a pleural thickening as well as enhancement of the pleura in case of empyema. This is called split pleura sign. Then in case of asbestosis, the pleura will be involved very earlier stage. So pleural pathology is, will be very early compared to the pulmonary parenchyma. So then later it goes for a collapse. So the, the pleura goes in for a uh, uh, pleural thickening and then it causes a collapse of the underlying lung. So this site is called as this crowding of the pulmonary parenchyma will cause common type appearance or grow foods, grow feet appearance. So this sign is described in asbestos. Now we come to certain cardiac conditions. So it's called double density sign. In case of a mitral stenosis, you are seeing a left heart border with one, uh, one straight border and Beneath that retrocardiac, but there's another opacity, small opacity you are seeing. So that's a double density sign. And also, you are seeing the splaying of the carina. Normal carina angle will be less than 100 degrees. So here it is more than 100 degrees, and you are seeing double density because of the enlarged left atrium. So this is a uh, double density sign described in uh, mitral stenosis. And also, you will see the capillarization of the vessels, pulmonary veins. So this is called uh, uh, inverted mustache sign. So this also can be, uh, this uh, pulmonary venous hypertension also is there in this patient. So there are two signs, uh, important mustache appearance in double density sign. So these are close, closer to uh, This is called a Shimita sign. So in the name uh, Shimita is a Turkish, uh, it's a Turkish uh, it is a SWOT, so you will have a small paracardiac opacity, curvy near paracardiac opacity, uh, extending below the diaphragm, going up to the hilum level. So this is because of the partial anomalous 
pulmonary venous center. Normally, all the pulmonary veins they empty into the left atrium. Yeah. Okay. In case yeah. of a single uh, vessel anomaly, it's a single cell. That's why it's called partial anomaly. Out of all the four vessels, only one vessel will be having an abnormal venous drainage. It enters into the systemic circulation, go into the IVC instead of entering the left atrium. So that's why you have this appearance called Shimita syndrome, or otherwise it's called hypogenetic lung syndrome. This lung will be slightly smaller in volume also. It's hypogenetic lung syndrome or partial anomaly. Okay. In case of pulmonary thromboembolism, so we have uh, two signs. So when, it, when you have a closer look and you compare the opacity, there is slight increased lucency compared to this level because of the oligemia. So that is that is one of the findings that is called yeah. play, um, Westermark sign. So the pulmonary oligemia, focal pulmonary oligemia is called Westermark sign. And you see the left hilum is slightly prominent. Normally, the left, right pulmonary artery will be better seen than the left pulmonary artery. So the left pulmonary artery is equal or slightly more than that of the right pulmonary artery. So that is because of thrombus. So these two findings, if you are seeing, then it's the most, uh, most common uh, finding in case of a pulmonary thromboembolism. So one is called as Krishna sign. So this prominence of the pulmonary trunk uh, is the Krishna sign. And pulmonary, uncle pulmonary oligemia is the Western and uh, this is another finding in, uh, described in uh, pulmonary infarct and in, uh, in the case of uh, extensive pulmonary thromboembolism, uh, uh, that's a pulmonary infarct, associated pulmonary infarct, then we have a sign called uh, Hampton's hump appearance, so Hampton's hump you see in pulmonary. So this is a little less common because the pulmonary infarct uh, in, 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 to have a pulmonary infarct, there should be a pulmonary thrombus and the pulmonary, uh, pulmonary artery as well as the bronchial artery should be both should be affected. So that is quite bad. So, but this is a sign to spread and some sign in case of a pulmonary infarct. So this many of us are familiar. So pericardial effusion, many back sign. So. So transposition of great arteries will have a constant appearance. So you have a narrow pedicle and a cardiomegaly with a narrow pedicle that is described in case of the transposition of great arteries where you have the, uh, the, the origin of the atrio, uh, atrio arterial discontinuity, the ventricular arterial discontinuity. Yes, the sign is distended TAP, we are total anomalous pulmonary venous center. Previously what you saw similar to the partial anomalous pulmonary venous center. We will have here, we have a snowman appearance or figure of eight appearance which is described in total anomalous pulmonary venous center. Where all the four uh, pulmonary veins are emptying into the abnormal location instead of entering into the left area. Next, uh, this is a uh, blue shaped heart, very common in pathology of valid. Then pulmonary edema, we have a bad brain sign. So the perihilar opacity is increased perihilar opacity uh, relative to the uh, peripheral lungs. So that is a described in pulmonary edema. Now we come to the media stand. There are two important signs, cervical thoracic sign and the abdominal uh, thoracic sign. So cervical thoracic sign, when you are seeing the left, so here I am not seeing the lateral margin of the lesion above the clavicle, medial end of the clavicle. So this lesion is in the anterior media center. If I am seeing the lesion above the medial end of the clavicle, then it is in the posterior media center. So posterior media center has got little more space. So the lesion can expand expand up to the, into the, into the above the level of clavicle. If the lateral margin of the lesion is not seen above the level of clavicle, then if the lesion is in the anterior media center. If I see the lateral margin of the lesion above the level of the clavicle, then it is in the posterior media So another one is thoraco abdominal sign. In this sign, uh, we are seeing the margin of the, this is the iota, aortic aneurysm with the dissection in this case. You see the lateral margin which is coming here and you see a small speck of calcifications here. So normally the iota should come down and converge just before the diaphragm level. So here we are not seeing that there is no uh, uh, convergence here, it is going down like that. So when you see it like this, it is called thoraco abdominal sign, which is seen in aortic and here is some kind of dissection. So 
last few slides, the infections in the very commonly see the reports of pain, but nodules and those appearance, mediated tuberculosis and any 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 kind of endobronchial infection or tumor metastasis can have this appearance. But this is what we describe as pain, but appearance. So close up those. So this is a particle uh, small nodules with the linear branching opacities. So this is what is called as pain, but appearance. Now, air bronchogramsin. Initially, I told about air bronchogramsin. So, it is a opacity, huge opacity is there. The hilum is not pulled up. Uh, but you are seeing small lucency, streaky lucency uh, here near the hilum. So, this is because of the consolidation, not because of the mass lesion. So, in CT, this is how it will look like the air bronchogramsin that indicates it's a consolidation. The only exception is that bronchoalveolar carcinoma will also have a similar appearance. But otherwise, 99% of the times when you see this appearance, it's because of the pneumonia. Air present sign or uh, will be seen in this uh, fungal pod within the cavity, and you are seeing a small lucency in the non dependent area. This is called aspergillum you know, uh, fungal because of the fungal pod. Air present sign. So, in CT, when you have a doubt whether it's a mass or uh, really an aspergillum or fungal pod, you put the patient in prone, this is a supine position. So, the fungal pod will move to the dependent position again, in the so, uh, prone position also. So, this is a supine and prone, so it, the fungal pod moves to the dependent position. So, last slide. So, in, in, in case of invasive aspergillosis, we'll have a sign called peripheral callosign. So consolidation with surrounding halo because of the micro hemorrhages. So that will produce a sign called as uh, peripheral halo with this sign. So this, this, this hemorrhagic metastasis can also produce this similar appearance. So the two differential diagnoses is uh, invasive aspergillosis or hemorrhagic metastasis. <coughs>